Hello, friends. This is Pastor Donnie here, um, wanting to share a little bit more in depth on uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. That's the Holy Week uh, final devotion as we head into Good Friday. This is an amazing passage. Um, we know that the author is coming out of chapter 11. You've got this cloud of witnesses. You've got all these people who've served as markers along the way for us to reflect and look at biblical history and see the faithfulness of God and just see how God has worked faithfully through these men. But they're markers. They're not the end point. We're not to look at them and say they were such great people and I want to be just like them. That's clearly not what the author is saying. Um, but what he is saying is that for every one of these people, He's, we're looking at life and we're saying life is hard. It's a journey. He calls it a race and we have to run it with perseverance. When you run a race, a long race, I mean, it's grueling and painful. Sometimes you just want to collapse and you just want to crawl or walk or slow down. There's so many things along the way that are tempting you to stop and just give up. And the author's saying, don't give up. Look at all these people, a cloud of witnesses that God has faithfully worked through you can go, keep moving with perseverance. And he goes to verse two and he says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Jesus Christ is the ultimate embodiment of somebody who has run the race with perseverance to the end. I mean, he endured to the end. He not only endured the scorn of all the people around him and all the, the rejection and abandonment of his own friends, but he endured on the cross the rejection of his own father. Why did he do it? And the author says here, he says two things. He's the author and perfecter of our faith, and he did it for the joy set before us. Now, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. When you think about the author and perfecter, what does that mean? In the Greek, the word author is archegos or archego. And the Greek, the Greek for the word perfecter is the word finisher, uh, the teleos of our faith. So he is the archego and teleos of our faith. He is the, the, the champion of and the finisher of our faith. What does that mean? Um, as an example, we can go all the way back to 1 Samuel chapter 17. You have David before he became king. And David is facing Goliath. Goliath is the champion of the enemy. He is the one representative. If Goliath wins, the entire enemy wins. All of them. If David wins, all of God's people win. And so uh, essentially, uh, all of David's victory or loss is imputed on his people. And David so heads down into the valley of the shadow of death, essentially, and he goes to meet Goliath. Now, that's a really interesting picture because if you look at Goliath, he's a hulking mass of a person, and he's dressed in scale armor, bronze scale armor, uh, technologically efficient, bronze scale armor. He, uh, that's really important. Why? Because if you go even further back from 1 Samuel chapter 17, all the way to Genesis chapter 3, who is the one that came in and, and brought mankind down in the first place? It was the serpent. He was filled with scales. And so now, centuries later, you have David as the champion of his people. He was the one that was stepping forward. Nobody else lined up for 40 days as Goliath was taunting God's people, nobody else would step forward to fight him. David steps forward. David moves ahead. He enters into the valley. He serves as a representative of God's people. He is the best version of his people. That's what the champion is. And the author is saying here that Jesus is the best version, the arch ego of who we are. He's the best version of us. He is the ultimate representative. There's no one greater than Jesus that could represent his people. And David defeats Goliath. David strikes Goliath on the head the way it was prophesied that uh, we would strike the, even we would, we would crush the head of the serpent in a sense. He, he reenacts that by crushing Goliath's head and he wins the victory for his people, for God's people. And in the same way as our champion, Jesus enters in and he faces the ultimate enemy. And uh, this is the ultimate battle on the cross. And yet it was through his defeat, through his loss, through his humiliation, through his death. We're talking about the ultimate pain and the ultimate suffering. 
when he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What he's saying is this is the most incredible suffering that anyone could ever endure. This is the only suffering that would truly ever ruin any of God's people because it would separate us from the beauty and the presence of God. And there he was abandoned by God, rejected by God forensically on the cross. And when he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What he's saying is I've lost the father. It's the one place where he doesn't call God his father. He says, I've lost the father. So he calls him, my God, my God. And so God has abandoned him. God has rejected him. He has suffered complete and total loss. This is the ultimate defeat, the ultimate humiliation, the ultimate death. And the author here says he finishes it. To the end, he endured. He went all the way and didn't sin once on behalf of his people. He is our greatest champion, the greatest version of ourselves, and he wins. And through his death, through his defeat, we now have victory. Because Jesus wins, we win. Because Jesus died, in a sense, we spiritually, we are in union with him. We die with him. And because he rises again, we live in him. And so uh, we're able to say that our lives are hid with Christ on high, with Christ our Savior and our God. And so the author says that he is the author and perfecter of our faith. Why would he embark on such a journey? Why would he even endure this kind of, of suffering and death? It says, for the joy set before him. You would only do that. You would only embark on anything this painful, uh, this much suffering and pain um, if, if it was worth it for you, if there was a joy at the end that you were pursuing. What was the joy that Jesus was pursuing? It was his people. It was us. He did it out of his love for us. And so this passage is like the ultimate love story, the ultimate hero story, and uh, there's no sequel. He comes, it, it, he brings everything to an end on the cross. And there, as they nail, as they push that cross into the place of the skull, they were crushing the skull of the enemy once and for all, and Jesus wins. And so, yes, on Good Friday, we enter in with sobriety, and we enter in, sometimes some people come in ritualistically, almost with a, a somber attitude, but in many ways, it was a cry of victory for us because Jesus says it's finished. He's the finisher. And so we get to say that the serpent will be crushed. We get to say that the enemy has been crushed, uh, not because of anything that we've done, not because of anything that we've done by our goodness or our righteousness or anything that we've earned, but because we see Jesus' merit and his record and his holiness and his goodness and his faithfulness and his endurance. And he, perf he finishes the, 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 the victory and he earns the victory for us as our champion. And so um, the author closes by saying in verse 3, let us consider him, consider him who endured. Um, to consider is to understand, to know, to pursue um, who in, he, he who endured. So as we enter into Good Friday and as we come to worship him on Good Friday, let's reflect on the cross of Christ. Through his defeat, we get victory. Through his great and deep sorrow, we get to experience an everlasting joy. Through his pain and suffering and death, we have new life. And so even though it is finished is a somber, almost sober statement, for us it is a cry of victory because the line of Judah just roared that he has won. And so it's my prayer and hope that as we come together, as we prepare to come together tonight uh, on Good Friday, let's just reflectively, even if you're not going to come to worship with us tonight, um, just reflectively, just, just prayerfully, worshipfully, look, look to Jesus. Fix your eyes on him. See his beauty. See his, his suffering, that, the suffering that he endured to the end for his people, for you and for me. And uh, let us, as we fix our eyes on him, let us remember that we are his joy because the more we consider us as his joy, he becomes our joy. And that enables us, gives us the power to endure. My friends, I, it's my hope and prayer that as in the midst of your suffering and, and just the hardness of life, don't let sin and hardship harden you. Let the gospel and the grace and the love of Jesus Christ soften you so you could run this race uh, uh, with, with great endurance to the end. Thank you, friends. God bless.